Gloria Estefan, an icon, music mogul, and change maker. She brought a seismic shift to the music industry with her Cuban sounds and catapulted crossover success for some of the biggest international stars, staying true to her roots and never forgetting her querida tierra. This is your life, and we're going to start in the beginning. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's long, but quick. Born in Havana, Cuba, Gloria Fajardo and her mother fled to Miami when the xenophobic threat of a Cuban invasion was a reality. We came in May of 1960, so we weren't that welcome either. I remember looking for an apartment with my mom, and there were signs that said, no, no children, no pets, no Cubans. Your dad, he was a political prisoner. He came back and joined the US military. He was a true patriot. He fought in Vietnam. He did. My father believed in freedom. He told my mom, I have to fight communism wherever it may be. Even though he came back alive from Vietnam, the war ended up killing him. Yes, it did. He was, uh, he had Agent Orange poisoning, which manifested in multiple sclerosis, but he had a lot of other uh, you know, symptoms that had nothing to do with MS. So he was on that list of the Agent Orange, and uh, he died at 47. He got sick at 34. Oh, wow. He was very idealistic, and he put his money where his mouth was, and he put his life as well. What values did your parents instill in you and your sister? Hard work, determination, schooling. She was a stickler about us having an education and a good one. She worked so hard to pay for prep school for my sister and I, even though she really couldn't afford it. It was very important that we keep the Spanish language and do it correctly. In high school, you already played the guitar and sang, but when did you realize this is what I want to do for a living? I sing since I talk, Maria Elena. Really? This came with me, but I didn't feel the need to do it for other people. And then I met Emilio. I love to hear your love story. <laughs> How did you and Emilio meet? My mom says, we're going to a wedding. We walk into the banquet hall in Hialeah, and I see this somebody playing Do the Hustle on the accordion. And it's a tux and fairy lights everywhere and this magical thing. And I'd never went anywhere, so, you know. So I was en enchanted. So he says, why don't you sit in with the band? And my mom, yes, yeah, sing, sing for them. And at the end of the night, he asked me to join the band, and I said no. So he tracked me down two weeks later, and he asked me again. Gloria and the Miami Sound Machine burst onto the scene with hits like Let It Loose in Conga, which fused percussion and Latin beats. Come on, shake your body, baby, do that conga. No, you can't control yourself any longer. Feel the rhythm of the music getting stronger. Don't you fight it till you try to do that conga beat. They didn't want conga to be the single. They wanted another single, and we told them conga's a single. They still put out another one. We got conga to the top 10. It took a year. They thought that it wasn't going to be the hit because they thought it was too Latin sounding. Oh my God, now it, it plays everywhere. You know, you were the first Latina, certainly the first female Hispanic, to make the crossover to English. Now your music is such a part of our culture, but it wasn't that easy to make the crossover either, right? Emilio and I were our biggest cheerleaders, but every time we would tell them, we want to do this, this is a really cool mix. It was like, eh, if you really want to break through in a market that's not a Latin market, you got to lose the percussion, you got to lose the horns. Some guy even told Emilio, lose the girl singer, they don't sell, because at the time, there really weren't a lot, of, most of the bands were all male-centered. But there's nothing more motivating to Emilio and me than the word no. You know, if there wasn't a Gloria Stefan, there probably wouldn't be a Ricky Martin, a Shakira, a Selena, and so many others. Do you realize what a trailblazer you are? Oh my gosh, well, that's a very lovely compliment. And I always hope that people would recognize good music, whether it was, whether we were there or not. You and Amelia have opened so many doors for so many people. Because so many doors were slammed in our face. Right, but not just producing their work, but also using your contacts. I mean, I, I, I see it it's all the joy. time. It's a joy because 
We want to be supportive. We want Latinos to succeed. We wanted people to hear Shakira, which is a different, you know, she's Lebanese, Colombian. So much rich music comes out of Colombia. Well, your work, your talent has been recognized um, in so many ways. You have countless Grammys, Presidential Medal of Honor, Kennedy Center Honors, American Music Award Lifetime Achievement, Ellis Island Me Medal of Honor, a star on the Walk of Fame. I mean, you're even on the high school honor roll. Yes! Right? Oh, yes. Are you kidding me? <laughs> to my mother, that's the biggest honor of all. You know what? It's beautiful. Those awards are really lovely. There's moments in your life where you look back and you go, wow, that's great. I remember when we got the Presidential Medal of Freedom that it's the first time that a couple ever received it together. All I could think of was my dad. The Medal of Freedom, which is the reason he brought us to this country and to be receiving that, it was, wow, it was a big deal. It must have been very special for you. You did it to me again. No, I didn't do it. Yeah, anything. you always make me cry. You want to smile? <laughs> OK, here's another one. You have your own Barbie now. Yes. She was born on my birthday, September 1st. Aww. And uh, I literally sent them my outfit from that tour so that they, they were such sticklers about being precise and making it be exactly as it could be. Uh, True to life. Right. Uh, we're even the same size. <laughs> this is pretty special, come on. You celebrate and share your, your culture through your music, but what does being a Latina, a Cuban Americana mean to you? I think it's just so enriching to be able to count on not just the wonderful culture that I've lived in the United States, the values that this country has instilled in me are just as important as the ones that my mother clung to and made sure she passed on to me. And I always say I was replanted in American soil, but I was watered with Cuban sun and Cuban water. Our thanks to Maria Elena. And you can see more of that interview in the Soul of a Nation special, Mi Gente, Groundbreakers and Changemakers, now streaming on Kulu. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.